lanes I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stopping this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change I withdraw on the things I make I turn flaws into flawless traits Welcome to Breaking the Cycle, episode 18 Breaking the Cycles how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry. Did you These forget the intro of your own show? No. I don't think I did. These are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids so that they can learn to think for themselves and are, are not afraid to be, to be themselves so when they eventually, and they will be, are confronted with these life situations, they are not in shock and will have an idea on how to approach it. I think you forgot the period after like the third sentence. You're a very, you're a very fast talker. I don't know where you get possibly that from. Where you learn to talk so fast? I don't know who did who did you go to talk so fast. You. No. You just Breaking the Cycle, episode number 18, What's Up Freaks? It's been a while since we've been on here. You can see we're on a new recording. Are you hitting me or a high five? <laughs> ready to dodge. What is that? Say something. I thought you were going to give me a high five or you were going to smack Are you guys me. ready for a joke to Oh my God, ready? All right, what do you got? How do you put a baby alien to sleep? You rock it. Oh my God. As you can see, our jokes on Breaking the Cycle have just gotten worse and worse and worse, which means they're getting better and better. You can see on the, the Instagrams, can't, well, actually, oh, everyone can see it now. The old studio, you couldn't see this. This right here is our Freak Family Code little, whatever it's called, I don't know, mashup. What the hell it's called? FNN. We're still trying to figure out what that means. But this is the free code. Listen, you have core values in your business. You have core values in your little karate dojo or whatever, in your jujitsu school. We had core values in the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps is honor, courage, and commitment. You need to have family core values. Now, some of them might be cr cross fields of fire where they're very similar to the business core values, but you should have core values, and we call it the free code. It's an operating system, the way that we run the family. And we, we rely on these in different situations. Like, we, it's been a while since... We had this show, so we're going to kind of give you some recap and catch up on some things. Lots of things have been going on lately in the Freak family, but we always go back when, when the life kicks in the nuts, we always go back to the Freak code to get through it. And what, what is the first part of the Freak code? Are you smacking me again? Or are you? I, I got to dodge when you're around. I got to wear a headgear and mouthpiece. Discipline. Discipline. Energy. Energy. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Mind, Mind body, body, mission, listen, create, win, win confidence, protect, freak. Are you a freak? Uh -huh. Are you a little freak show? Uh -huh. What's it on your hat there? Costa Rica, pura vida. What does that mean? Do you even know what that means? Uh -huh. I think it means live a crazy life. Uh -huh. All right. All right, so we're going to catch up on some things and... Listen, the, the, as you saw in the introduction about these are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids. And, and we take a very different approach to these little freak shows so that we can break the cycle. To break the cycle of negativity, of pessimism, of, of holding yourself short, holding yourself back, letting the world hold you back, letting society, letting teachers, letting parents, letting the freaking social medias hold you back. Whatever it is, we're breaking that cycle. And... It's been a while since we, we had an episode here, and a lot has gone on since then. These guys have been to their first funeral since the last show, right? Your grandfather's funeral, and that's something serious. And we, we had a show once talking about death. Remember after the little bird, the little bird that we had? Talking about death. You, you, you're going to have days where something good, you think good happens, and it ends up being bad. Then something bad happens, and it ends up being good. 
So that's why we rely on our freak code to get us through, to keep us centered, to keep us in the middle. Like your your hamster. What's up with your hamster? Um, which tornado. Hamster? Tornado. The fluffy one? Yeah, the fluffy one. Which one do you think I'm talking about? The Zip. fluffy one. No, we talked. Well, we talked about that. The death. Don't talk about the one right now that you're dealing with. Oh yeah, yeah. he escaped, Wait. and then no. It so was, first, he's, I, and I was starting. So in the last. <laughs> mm. Jesus, you're dangerous, man. He's freak you up. You're, you and your AR-14s are dangerous, man. You got a 50, 50, what is it? What is it? What is it? A 50 round, 50, oh, no. a 30, 50 magazines or no, something? No, 30, 30 clips. 30 clips in your magazine. You're dangerous, man. Keeping them AR-14s. Okay. Go. Well, what we got? so in the last house, it was so dumb. Under the cabinets, we had these holes in our dad's office. So Tyson let our hamster tornado loose and he went into the hole. So So for months, as we were, pa we were packing for a good month, he said, once we empty out the house, can I let the the tornado loose so we could just see what he would do when he has free roam of the house? About 15 seconds into letting it, this experiment in a big ass empty room, what happened? He, he crawled into the wall. And then we had to get him out. Oh. Snitches end up in ditches. No, no. So that was a rental. Let's property. just say. All right. Well, well. What was the lessons we learned when when he so he got stuck in the wall and he's in the wall. We could hear him way back in the wall underneath, like a sink cabinet. Yeah, and he couldn't turn around. He couldn't get out. We couldn't see him deep inside there, but you could hear him scratching for his life and panicking and freaking out. What did we do? We, First, we stayed calm. We did. Uh, we no. did? No, no, no. No, you did. Okay. What is the lesson we learned? What did you guys do overall for the most part? We got him out. No. Initially, first. When it first happened. We, we freaked we out. We panicked. We panicked. Freaked out. This one's going crazy. What are we going to do? Running around like a madman? Screaming. And while he's... Then, then I say, all right, well, I gave him a list of, of some very specific tools, tools that I needed to figure this out, <laughs> staying nice and calm, telling him, okay, I need a crowbar, a hammer, and I think a knife, right? Well, I had the knife on me, because you, you always should have a knife on you. If you don't have a knife on you, then something's wrong. You should always have it. You never know when you need to open up some mail or something. Yeah, and besides, right. and other other bad, other bad guy candy, other tools. But anyway, so I told him to get a, a hammer, a crowbar, I told him specifically what crowbar, where it was, in the garage, in what box, the yellow crowbar, what type of hammer I needed for a very specific job, but nice and calm, saying, okay, it's here. We sat there, calmed him down, but he's freaking out, so panicking, and while panicking, then what happened while you were freaking out, running to get this stuff, like going in a, in a oh, tornado? I remember. You were going in a tornado, looking for a tornado. What happened? I remember that he was getting the crowbar out of your truck, and he was, he was opening the back of the truck, and it hit my head. You bashed your head, right? So now this one's got a lump on her head the size of a golf ball. This like red lump looks like a cartoon. It just went like on the cartoons. So That's she's, true. This one's running around screaming because of her head is knocked, almost knocked unconscious. This one's running around freaking out because the damn the, the damn tornado is is in the wall somewhere. They're running around like like a, a kid a kid version of a tornado. Does that you think that's gonna help solve any problems when something's stuck in a wall? No, no. but it really hurt. <laughs> I bet it did, but. It happened because we're running around like crazy. So what is the lesson that we yeah. learned to happen when shit goes crazy and shit goes sideways? What did we? What's the lesson we learned? You gotta stay calm. Stay calm. Oh, and also stay I focused. Think. Relax. Make a plan, and then attack. Attack. I forgot. To That's tell part you. of our code, right? Attack. Part. Let, let, let's see. Let's think about just that situation. So I sat there. I said, I need this, 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 and this. I stayed calm. We sat there. I told him, oh, and I told her to go get some food, to put some some hamster rat food or whatever it is, some rat, rat food next to the thing to try and lure it out to see if that would help to keep it calm, to not go crazy. Because this thing, if this little thing hears all this crazy, this one has her head bashed open. This one's running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Of course, that thing's not going to come out. Shit, I would stay hidden in that wall if I heard what was going on in that damn house. I wouldn't have come out. I'd be like, these fools, these fools are nuts. I'm getting the fuck out of here and I ain't coming back. I'll go live in these damn walls. So... Telling it like foreshadowing. Staying calm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> staying calm and controlled, and figuring out of making a plan, preparing a plan, and then attack. 
violently attack, violence of action. So it's all right. Here's what's going on. It's screwed up. What can we do about it? What's the plan? Bam, bam, bam. Nice and calm. And then violence of action. When it's time to go, it's time to freaking go. So then I end up ripping half the wall apart. I mean, allegedly. Uh, yeah, allegedly. What does that mean? Like, maybe not. Prove it. Like, a metaphor of what we did together. Like, we shouldn't have. Whatever. Yeah. Next we're time. already gone from there. Well, we already got our deposit back for that rental house, so we should be all oh, yeah, clear. So let's just hope they don't look in that room, in that section of the room. Okay, anyway. so let's go to present. Yeah. Let's go present. So we bash open the I, I rip like, open the wall as much as I need to, keeping it safe without hurting the thing. We reach in, get it out. How many times? We're not in kindergarten. I know, but I was telling the story. No, can I? All right, you're going to tell it back. I'm just take, telling this part about the lessons. All right, so then, well, I had to get those. Well, let's... Before we go on to the next part of the story, you can tell the next part of the story, whoever can tell the next part of the story. Let's, now if you're going to sit there eating your hands with your head down and sitting and slapping down all the time. You, you didn't eat enough dinner? You're eating your hands? <laughs> yeah. So what, what, did, what did we, which parts of the, of the free code did we have there? Discipline. Definitely discipline. You maintained your discipline. You have to maintain your discipline in order to stay, staying in the green, your emotional discipline. Controlling your shit, keeping your shit together, staying focused and centered and breathing and calm. That is discipline. That is the ultimate version of discipline. Emotional discipline. Also, Physical discipline is easy. Working out is easy. Nutritional discipline is easy. And the only reason it's not is because people can make excuses and don't really give a shit. That's all it is. It's just a decision to not eat shit. But that this side of energy eh, was, well, not really. bad kind of attack. Well, attack was definitely one. You right over there? Yeah. What's I'm going good. on? I'm good. I'm doing him. Yeah. Is I, I'm a, my back hurts. Are we boring you? No, you're not. What else are we, what other parts of the free code that you just said? Um, attack. Attack. When it was time, after maintaining the emotional discipline, preparing a plan, freaking attack. Nah, maybe not mind, body, mission. Was there a mission that we had? Yes. yes. Hell yeah, we had a mission. Get the yellow We had a mission up. to get... The plan we prepared for it was, listen, did we have, did listen. we have to listen there? Yes. We have to calm down and focus and listen. All right, what's the plan? Who's going to do what? Like, think about it. Someone gets hit by a car and you're right there watching it. This kid is riding down the street in a bike and then bam, gets hit by a car. If everyone just freaked out, oh my God, his bone is sticking out of his leg. He's screaming, oh my God, a little poor little kid. His parents are taking pictures and they're probably shooting some Instagram videos instead of staying calm and someone saying, okay, you... With the gray shirt, what's your name? Tyson. Tyson, you go run and call 911. You with the purple shirt, what's your name? Um, Midge, you are going to go run and go get some <laughs> towels so we can stop the bleeding. You got it? I'm going to stay here with him and try to keep him calm. Got it? Go. Go do it. Tyson, bam. Call 911. You giving clear instructions, having a plan. That's the mission. They're going to need to listen as we prepare and have the plan. And create, because we had to create the plan. Create, I guess you could say uh, create the plan a little bit. When? When we were looking, I mean, you're looking for we a win. at the end. Confidence. Confidence is a little bit. Once you, I mean, we didn't know if we we're going to find him. If I'm going to just have to tear the whole damn house down to find this rat. You know the world, what was the world record for the rat? We know we Googled it today. Four, four, and, four and a half years. years. Four and a half years is the Guinness record for a freaking hamster living. It's freaking nuts. Four and a half years. So you get this thing, you give it a name, you get all attached to it, you, you, it becomes part of like your family, and it's dead in maximum. World record, four and a half years. That probably means like two, two, two and a half, two to three years. And that's long probably. Probably more towards two. And... Protect, maybe not so much. Oh, well, yeah, protect. You did. You had to protect the hamster from being stuck. Because he, if he got jammed, if he, if we never got out of there, he, the place he was in was stuck. He wasn't going anywhere. He would have starved to death in there. Died. Imagine just him just sitting there, starving to death. That would have been not a great way to go. Not water. He brought water. He probably would have died from not drinking water first. Dehydration. Because the way he got in, it was too high. And he high. dropped down, so he couldn't yeah. get back up out. Also, so, he couldn't turn back around. So that He's too chubby. Oh, right. hands. Are you kidding? Live on, on video, you're sitting there. Okay, anyway, back to the story. Can we no, not anyway. Don't change the one? subject. I'm not done. Because also, Lessons. the part of the free code, part of the free code, freak. Was it part of being a freak to do it? Like, yes, yes, when I'm sitting there bashing a wall in a rental house to get a freaking hamster out because little kids are going nuts and that's the mission. That's the mission. And when it's time, 
to go. It's mission over the man. Mission accomplishment. It's time to make it happen. And we got the little hamster out. With, and you're not, no, you're going to tell a story. Right, you're, no, you're not. Because you're, not, okay, you're too busy okay. eating your hands. Nice you're on the story. Okay. When you're done in your hands, you can tell the next part. He's on right now. A month later. A month, about a month and a half later. We kept him in his cage. And you, I think you were away. And we put them both in here. So, Tornado was right there. And. By the way, I just cleaned this countertop. And I saw some hamster shit up there that you left here from when that cave was here. So that's your ass after we're off the live show. Anyway, yeah. continue. So Tornado was right there. And the tube connecting from the bottom, he opened it. And he got onto the countertop. And he must have fell down. And went into the walls here. There's two holes right here, I think. So he could have went in either one of them. He could have crawled underneath the door and... And then, so what happened from there? And four days later... Five. Four, <laughs> and, and, a half, story. four yeah. and a half, five days, we didn't see him. And just happened to be that the dog went to the bathroom early in the morning and we had to clean it up. Well, the and, new dog in the house, oh, yeah. right? Uh-huh. And Midge saw Tornado running through no, the hall. And I, tr I tried to catch him, but then we caught him in the bathroom. He was running like... How many days later was it? Five. About five. So in the four in the morning, you just happened to see him running through the hallway of the house. Four to five days later. Holy crap. And we knew that the cage wasn't going to work. And... We were, we were going to buy an aquarium, but we never did, and he escaped again. And he's escaped right now, so we don't have tornadoes. So you lost him, found him, well, we escaped, we rescued him. The universe him. said... We rescued him, then you lost him again. He popped up at the... Like, look at how things work out, how sometimes the universe gives you another chance. So, if the we didn't get it, if there wasn't a new dog... That didn't shit on the floor in the in the house at we four in the morning, in and I happened to see it and wake them both up because he was doing one thing and then she was going down the hallway. So if they both weren't awake, if I just woke one of them up, they wouldn't have seen him. Woke them both up, so she happened to see him at the split second he was cutting through the hallway to probably go into another hole, saw him and catch him. If all that stuff didn't happen, so when you think like, look, that's what we were saying in the beginning. When sometimes yeah, something. Not, not, not necessarily miracles, but something bad that you think is bad that actually ends up being good. It was pretty bad. The dog shit on the floor, right? Did it turn out to be something good? Yeah, but... And then, what did we talk about after that? Actually, now you had him. It's like, all right, the universe gave you another chance. It's like the second time you lost him. He escaped from that cage many times in the old house, but he was always just found right there in like a candle or whatever. But what, else, what did we talk about after that? We were going to buy an aquarium, but we never did. And he escaped again. And he's in the walls somewhere right now. How do you Hopefully. know he's in the walls? I don't know. Well, we placed his food in his cage. And we put all the good food in there that he likes. And left and, the doors open. And we left the doors open. And then next morning, we go in the cage and all the good food is gone. So, he's alive. And we're going to build a trap for him. Get him back. Hopefully. How are we going to build a trap? What are we going to do? What are we going to set up? We're going to use the candles that he liked to go in, in the old house. And we're going to put some of the good food in there. And hopefully he'll just walk in. And we had a talk. And it's my fault. I should have. I pulled up the aquariums. I showed it to them. But they didn't go through with getting one or going to the pet store and buying one. Because they have the capability of doing that. But I should have made them do it. Because it's not the first that he escaped from that cage. That, that, cage and those tunnels and those tubes so many times not a normal hamster this thing is like this big fur ball it's like a weird ass hamster it's like this big thing it, it opens up it breaks through the tubes it breaks the tubes apart it's not meant for that kind of kind of cage and i told you when we when she found him in the hallway i said this is like the universe giving you another chance do it right this time so what's like what are the lessons there like to learn to listen to listen well listen not just listen to me what's the lesson even besides that what else do you get out of that should have used that second chance to get the aquarium. So when you fuck something up, 
and you make, and you learn something from it. You gotta un do something about it. Like chain un f yourself. Like un f the situation. If you just keep doing the same thing, what's gonna keep happening? He's just gonna keep getting the same thing, escape. right? If if you have a barn and a bunch of horses are in there, and you leave the gate open, and all the horses run away. You find you'll go and search all your horses and find them and bring them back to the barn and leave the gate open again at nighttime. What's gonna happen? Run away. You're gonna run away again. What should you do after they run away the first time? Close the gate. <laughs> Simple, <laughs> basic, it's very deep scientific stuff. But learn your lessons. Like the universe makes you lose. It makes you fail. You get much. You know, you get much smarter from losing shit. You get stronger from losing stuff. You get tougher from losing than from winning. If you win all the time. You're not getting stronger, smarter, and tougher. You're just cruising and you're on cruise control. You get complacent and just average. So those losses, those screw-ups, those failures are where you learn your lessons. And then what can you do with those lessons? Learn from them. Learn from them. You know, Ray in, from the project, he says, you know, a W is an L. Like you win, I mean, a W is a win. You know, wins and losses, W is win, and L is losses. Like you say, you got an, it took an L as a loss, right? He says, the W stands for what? Win. And the L stands for what? Loss. He or says, loser. no. Or loser. <laughs> he says, the, win, the W stands for win, and the L stands for learn. As long as you learn from it, you didn't lose. Because you're going to now get better the next time, right? You get it? You guys want to hear a joke? Oh, boy. There we go. Why did the golfer got? bring two pairs of pants? Hmm? Why, why did the golfer bring two pairs of pants? Sometimes I like to try and figure these out. Like try to go into the cheese mode in your damn brain to see if you can come up with what cheese. the cheese ball answer is going to be. Why? Did it, say it again. Let me get it one more time. Why did the golfer bring two pairs of pants? Something about four, hole in one. Hole in one. He had a hole in one. Got in it. Case Bam. In, one. in case he got a hole in one. See, sometimes you gotta do your brain. Nice job. You gotta, you gotta. There's a cheese part of your brain. You gotta, you gotta zap into it and get you the answers to the cheese jokes. I keep I looking at the door over what? there. I have another one. What? Another one. That's not how you get to tell it. You gotta, how do you tell it? How are you supposed to tell it? Um. What are you supposed to say? That's not. That's you say. Yeah. You just say I have a joke. Yeah. What? What do you say when you have a joke? That's why you joke? Yeah. That's how that's the opening for the joke. Another one. I can't wait to hear this one. See if I guess. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look and I'll be having them down. Alright, go ahead, go. Speak clear so we can hear you. Why should you knock on the door for the fridge before you open it? Why should you knock on the door for the fridge? This should be part of the way the jokes go. I have to you tell the cheesy jokes and I have to try and figure out the cheese answer. That's a new game we're gonna play. Yes. Stop eating your hands. Learn your lessons. Say it again. Clearly? Loud and clear. So the fine folks Loud across the... Loud and clear! The... Why should you knock on the fridge door before opening it? Why should you knock on the fridge door before opening it? Fridge door before opening it. That should be like a limit of, I don't know, 10 seconds for me to figure out. Why should you knock on the fridge door before opening it? You freeze, the lights out, cold, sour, I don't know, what? In case there's a salad dressing. There's a salad dressing? Like salad dressing, like salad sauce, but a salad dressing. Get it? The salad is like getting, getting dressed? dressed? Oh my god. Oh, that's horrid. Hell no, I'll never come up with that one. How would I ever figure that one out? No, I can go to the cheesiest part of the cheese ball part of the freaking brain and never come up with that In shit. In case there's salad dressing. So. That's that's what the, the, what we want to go over today is just those points like and then we also always want to tie into our free code like what lessons did we learn and what what other lessons what other lessons did you learn about about the night before we found them you and I were having a conversation about loss and death and hope and so like what else what else did you what other lessons are there to always be optimistic yeah. Jeez, good word. I was going to say positive, but yeah, because remember we were talking, I said, listen, and this was like, when it was like four to five days, like if he didn't find water very soon, he... we're going to be smelling them in our walls in a, a couple months from now or something like that. So 
BS be optimistic. Like, think, all right, he escaped because he was such a freak show little hamster. He just wanted to be wild and free. He's probably out in some wo the woods somewhere living the life of his dreams. So that's why you got to think of it. Or if he really wants to come back, we'll run into him someday. And the next, like, literally hours fucking later, we run into him. We're literally running down the hallway running into him. So it's being optimistic, always finding the bright side, looking at it from a different perspective. So outside eyes, instead of saying, oh, damn, we lost the thing. I should have bought this. I should have got the aquarium. I should have done that, whatever, whatever. All that stuff is just going to drag you down. So instead, having a different viewpoint of it, like, all right, he's probably happy wherever he is. That's where he wanted to do. That's where, he was meant, where he's meant to be right now. Or we're going to run into him again. And we had a conversation. Maybe he is going to, you know, we've had conversations about death. And you should be having conversations about life and death and loss and lessons and win and loss and learning and the things we're talking about about staying calm, controlling your damn emotions, having, you know, protecting each other, protecting little freak, little hamsters that can't protect themselves. You guys wanna hear a joke? Ah, oh, shit. Why is, the, why is the piggy bank so wise? Why is the piggy bank so wise? Pennywise. Pennywise, that'd be, no. That'd be no. Good. Why is the piggy bank, hold on, don't tell me. You gotta give me 10 slow seconds to try and figure why? it out. No, not out loud, because I can't focus in cheese brain. So you gotta give me one more time. You gotta I need like three times to hear it to have a chance. Why is the piggy being so wise? Is it something I can figure out? Maybe. Or is it like the other one where it's a salad dressing no. and no one in the world is ever gonna freaking figure it out? What do you have to make? Say it one more time. Don't give me hints. Say it one more time. One more time. It's like a focus. Why is the piggy being so wise? Why is the piggy bank so wise? Quarters, dimes, nickels, change. Money, rich, cash, fat, jingling. You're up. What is it? it? Why is the piggy bank so wise? Because it's filled with common sense. Get it? S C E T S. I, yes, yes, I get it. I never would have. I never would have gotten it ever, ever. I would. All right. So the point is, have these types of conversations with your kids. Also, remain remain optimistic. Yeah. Stay focused. We call it stay in the green. There's a long story behind that, but we will get to that at different times. Stay in the green. Stay focused. Stay centered. Keep your shit under control. Get your own self in order so you can accomplish the mission. So you can go bash freaking things open and think with a clear head and not bash your sister's head open with a door or whatever the hell happened. Holy crap. So no matter what happens, find the lesson in it, learn from it, and then after you learn the lesson... Freaking do something about it, or you get stuck in the situation like we're like right now, where all that we have now is a little bit of hope, a little bit of optimism, and I have to try and think, all right, he escaped again. After finding his home back after being gone for four days and he escaped again, it's got to be either he's living out there living the life or whatever, and we keep food out for him every day. He probably comes and eats, puts his little woodchuck, fills up his little woodchuck cheeks, wherever the hell he is, and goes wanders off in, the, in our walls and just shits and pisses all over the walls with all that food and stores up piles of food in the walls. And just living in his own mansion, all crawling through the house. Who knows where? But anyway, this is all part of what it takes to break the cycle. To teach, not just give your kids the things you never had. Yes, you want to do that. But you also want to give them experiences you never had. But even more important than that is get them to think for themselves. Teach them things that no one ever taught you. No one ever taught me this shit. I'm figuring this out right along with them. They're teaching me just as much as I'm teaching them. They don't even realize it. All right, this has been episode number 18 of Breaking the Cycle. We haven't talked about the new dog yet. I know, well, we have. We're, that, that, that could be we next got, show. We got, yeah, we're going to. We got a, we got can, a I, can I at least bring him over? All right, you want to bring the dog? Go get him. Quick, quick, quick. Hey, you better have something to talk to them about while she's going to do uh, that. Uh, uh? Today at the bank, an old lady asked me to check her balance. So I pushed her over. Wow. Uh -huh. Wait, can wow. you close the door just in case the rat escapes? Thanks. Don't go, tell mother. Um. On hers. Why did the pig stop sunbathing? What's up, dragon? Okay. So she's picking this guy up, sort of. There. Here, put him up there. There he is. Come down. There's the new 
Our new partner for breaking the cycle. Dragon! He whacked my hat with his tail. His waggy waggy tail. Anyway, this is an episode number 18 of Breaking the Cycle. In case no one told you today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses. Any of you freak shows want to say before we go? Don't scare the shit out of the dog. No! Excuses! My dog is like, what in the hell is going on? It's okay. Anyway, we will see you next time. You are freaking awesome. You are freaking awesome. You are freaking awesome. No excuses. Goodbye. Feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise.